with rolling. Right, volume is down. I'm now ready to concentrate. So, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. How do you? You have to do an introduction to the camera. Hello, camera. My name's Karen. No, but what, you have to say the, the name of the, the channel. Hello, and welcome back to Life, Love and Libraries. Or was it Love, Life and Libraries? Can't remember. Neither can I. <laughs> Hang on, let's get on YouTube, we can check. Right, how do I find us? <laughs> That's a good start. Okay. Uh, this is you, look at the third one down. Life, Love and Libraries. Uh -huh. right. Oh, I should subscribe. <laughs> I don't think you can subscribe to your own channel. Hang on, it's letting me. Because <laughs> you're not signed in. How do I sign in? Oh, oh sign my goodness. in. <laughs> That's good information, professional. How do I sign in? I don't actually. Um, right, so what are we going to talk about today? I don't know. So. Shall I do the introduction again? Now we know what we're actually called. Well, you've done the introduction already. No, I haven't. I got it wrong. Well, what did you say? I don't know I got it wrong. I think you got it right. Should we do it again anyway? It's going to be <laughs> Go on, then. Go on, then. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Love Life. Well. No, look, you've yeah. actually got it in front of you and you did it wrong. I think you did it right the first time. Let's try. Four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Life, Love and Libraries. Beside me is my delightful husband, Mr O'Farrell, Sergey, mm -hmm. who is currently studying for a degree in information... What's it called? Remind us of your degree title. <laughs> information and library studies. Or was it library and information studies? Yeah, it well be. We don't anyway. know. We've got lockdown madness. Don't, please bear with us. We'll try and get a bit more sober in just a moment. <laughs> so the topic of this video was going to be um, what we've learned during lockdown. <laughs> well, we're just demonstrating what not to do. It's a bit of a difficult time, isn't it, for everybody? Yeah, Trying it is. to do working from home. As you can see, we're working mm. here on our lovely creaky picnic mm. table yes. and fold-up chairs yes. on little laptops. Mm. We do have a delightful plant behind us, just for a bit of variety and prettiness. Um, so what have you learned working from home? Because it's, it's interesting now, because, mm. you know, when this all first started, we sort of thought, well undergraduate students are going to have to submit all their final yeah. projects and, that'll be and okay. everything and then we thought well postgraduates you know like myself by the time we come to do dissertations mm. and things we're probably going to be back to libraries yeah. back to physical spaces mm. but with the longer these things go on with um, and the university situation I don't mm. think that's going to be the case. No. Did you know it is currently illegal for libraries to be open? Really? Apparently. According to COVID-19 regulations. Wow, I wonder why though. Why can a shop be open but not a library? This is a question that I don't know. It's like an awful lot of the regulations. And don't worry, this isn't a political rant. <laughs> but they don't make sense. If you can go shopping with social distancing, etc, etc, why can't you go to a library? Now, there are issues with things, the, the virus apparently living on books for up to 72 hours. So you can see why you might not be able to browse a shelf. You can't work closely, but obviously you need to have social distancing. Mm. But does that mean you can't actually go to a library at the moment? No, you can't. That's interesting. Mm. That's, um, I suppose the thing is, whatever the situation is, this is the way it's going to be for yeah. probably, I mean, the place where I'm working, we reckon at least until January, mm. your workplace, we think, maybe... Possibly sooner. It, sooner. it varies depending on where the location, where the location yeah. is. Because I'm working in central London, it mm. seems that... Probably we won't go back to January because obviously we don't want to go on the public transport and yeah, things. Yeah, that makes sense. But because you're not so central London, maybe mm. you'll go back sooner, but who knows. But mm. anyway, I think the reality of the situation is that we're all going to have to work like this and adapt. Mm. And something as a student that I've kind of found shocking is I've always struggled with being motivated and studying around work and life and everything mm. anyway. But even some of my super motivated friends... Mm. Uh, have really struggled as well, which has shocked yeah. me and kind of actually been a bit worrying to me because I thought, wow, if these super motivated people struggle, yeah. even during me? this time, yeah. <laughs> what about me, somebody that found it hard yeah. to be motivated even mm. in normal times? So we thought we'd put the video together today to give some tips about mm. what we've learned, yeah. how we've sort of adapted, what I've learned as a student yeah. and a like, well, a lib an information semi professional, semi-information <laughs> professional, not yet qualified. Yeah. What you've learned as a <laughs> library professional, yeah. you know, that might help people because I think this is mm. what we're going to have to do for a while and we're just going to have to get on with it. When we speak to students, we just sort of 
it's not ideal, but it's like that. This is what it of, is. We yeah. can't make it perfect. We wish we could. And it's like that with everything in life at the moment. It's mm -hmm. not ideal, but you just have to do the best with what yeah. you've got. Isn't that one exactly. of your little... Um, I think that's the key thing. Isn't that one of your little catchphrases, it though? It is. Do the best you can with what you've got. And try not to worry about what you haven't got, because you can't change it anyway. So yeah. So, so what would you say has been a good tip? What have you learned from working at home that sort of people can... I think to be ingenious. Because we'll have quite often have people saying, "Can you get the? Can you get an ebook for me?" Now mm. we might not be able to purchase it for reasons that are too boring to go into, but by being ingenious and as an information professional, I couldn't possibly recommend this. But let's just say it's what I would do. Have a look and see what, where Google can help you. There are copies available of books which are quite surprisingly up to date. They are the latest editions. They do appear to be complete and correct. One or two of them I've even cross-referenced with ebooks we have purchased for students. And the text is quite often there. Now it doesn't have the flexibility in terms of searching, noting, printing, which unless you've got a printer at home, doesn't matter. But you can find the physical information. So that's a bit of a kind of under the table dodgy tip, maybe. <laughs> but be ingenious. Do make use of Google Scholar because it can be an easier interface to search maybe than the original library catalogue that you're used to and sometimes you will find useful links to things like researchgate academia.net i think it's called as well they can be useful resources that your library might not subscribe to you might have to sign up the only thing i would say is if you're asked to pay money for something think about it very carefully before you do yeah um because there's also think? Vital source, which is Good free at the moment. Mate. I think only till the 30th of June, but that's been really yeah. useful because I found one yes. of the core textbooks I needed on yeah. that. I think also actually what struck me is that when I've been doing some of my assignments, mm. I've actually have might find something that looks really interesting, and then mm. I just can't get it, and yeah. I just have to accept that's the way it is. I'm not going to be able to get that, and I'm going to mm. need to find something else instead. You know, when yeah. I did my first degree in music, my first master's mm. degree. Yes, your first master's. So um, modest. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting because talking to my supervisor when I did my dissertation, she was, uh, I'm not going to say much older lady, but she was a... <laughs> Watch it. She, she did her, her PhD in a different time. Not quite on She like, wasn't quite on a slate. No, like. she didn't do it on a slate, but a different, still a different age yeah. than we're in now. And I said to her, wow, how did you ever do a PhD mm. yeah. without like using a computer or without, you know, all these digital resources? Mm. And that's the thing is we're actually quite spoiled these days for information. Yeah. And when you think in the past people managed to do PhDs without computers, yeah. without access to information. Some of us managed to do a degree without them, just an ordinary <laughs> one. <laughs> so people just had to use what they could find in the old days mm. and they had to accept what they couldn't find yeah. and move on. And I think that's it sometimes, it's when you're doing your degree you just have to accept, mm. okay, that looks good, but I can't have that, so let's find something else. Mm. Because especially now there's so much information on everything, unless you are doing something like a PhD that's mm. so, so niche, but then that's probably going to be a very long process if you're doing a yeah. PhD anyway. You probably are going to have time when we come out of this, mm. and you're going to have other things you can work on for now till you get mm. to the point. But if you're doing Masters or an undergraduate, mm. I think you're always going to be able to find other information. Yeah, I think that's the key thing. It's very easy to get fixated. I need this title. It's on my core reading. It's absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. And yes, in an ideal world, you'd have it. We'd, your library would have purchased it for you as an ebook if it's available. But some things just aren't there and you just have to move on. Occasionally you can think, obviously use things like Google Books to get a preview. You can use things like Kindle to see what might be available. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you do just have to move away. Find something else. And I would say for most people, nine times out of ten, unless it's a PhD or very, very niche research you're doing, something else will cover similar points. Yeah. Would you agree? I would agree. Well, you definitely. found that. Oh. I have found that. And it's, mm. yeah, been really gutting sometimes when I see mm. something that looks just perfect. Yeah. But then again, like you said, actually, Google Scholar is quite useful because yes. then what I've tended to do is if I put the article I found into Google mm. Scholar, yeah, and then I can look what it's been cited in. Yes, and then one of those by. yeah documents, yeah. one of those articles might be relevant, mm. and because they've also cited mm. that person, then maybe yeah. I can use mm. it as a secondary yeah. reference, in even fact, though it's still not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. In fact, that is a top tip alert. 
whatever you're looking on, and obviously we're talking about generic researches like Google Scholar now, look, use the cited by trail. So you can see who used that, who's used that article in your research or in their research, and then you can see what they've done with it. You can also, and this is another top tip, top tip of that, top tip of that <laughs> use the reference list in the article you found. Mm -hmm. Because you can then follow the research backwards in time in one direction and forwards in time in the other. And yeah. you can then, you're never going to complete a full circle of research because it's probably never going to come to an end. But you can follow it as far as you can. And you can uncover some interesting areas that you might want to look at. So, top tip alert. That is a top tip. And I think that's it really mm. because it's just, I think the thing is, you know, things change and mm. you've just got to do your best in this time and keep yeah. going. Mm. So... And that's kind of what I'm having to do because I'm getting to the point where I'm going to run out of my registration period if I yeah, don't keep going. Because I know some people yeah. have taken breaks from their studies and things which during this. Which makes complete sense. Which does make sense yeah. if you can do that. Um, but is it worth it? You know, this is actually quite a good time because even though there's challenges with information, yeah. mm. it's also a good time when people are at home. They've got more yeah. time. You know, when you're not travelling to and from work, you can get your head down mm. and study. So it's just yeah. keeping a positive attitude, mm. accepting what you can get, what you can't. Mm. And something, you know... I've still managed to get a uh, distinction in one of my essays since Which this is lockdown. Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows that, you know, even though it's been a yeah. bit of a detriment being locked down, it can still be mm -hmm. done. So I think that's it. You have to, some things you can change and some things yeah. you can't. So work with what you've got, stay yeah, positive absolutely. and keep going. Yeah, and just, just keep going. And if one day doesn't work so well, try your best to walk away from it mentally and start again. Yeah, I think, so if we were going to summarise our top tips, Go on then, you summarise they them. would be, if you find, if you can't find the exact thing you need, eventually you're going to have to give up and find something that will do instead. So don't obsess over one thing, try and move on. Secondly, make use of the full text access that's been given. If you're working in a university or education context, your library will probably have a list of free, what they call COVID-19 resources. Mm. So make use of those. Make use of things like Vital Source, which is free until the 30th of June. We are not being paid or sponsored by them. Other organisations are available, but they are extremely useful. Mm. Sergey's doing information studies, I'm looking after engineering. We've both found useful materials for our students yeah. on that platform. I'll put a link in the description down below. Perfect. Just until the 30th of June, remember that, but still time. Mm. Also, Google Scholar. Once you've found an article on Google Scholar, use the cited by trail, and that'll be underneath the article. There'll be a link of two articles that have cited that material. So have a look at those. And also, in the original article, you can usually find nine times out of ten would you say there'll be some kind of full text link that you can make use of mm -hmm. quite often in something like the academia site or research gate or things like that where the pdf is available or if you've personalized google scholar you'll have a link to find it at your university library and you can find out how to do the personalization by googling personalized google scholar that's the quickest way and then look at the references in that article you found so you can go back in time and forward in time mm. and above all don't panic yeah, don't give up yeah that's good so leave uh, some comments down below for us yeah. if you've got any questions anything you would like advice on or tips on mm. and yes, if you've got any tips or advice how you've sort of carried on studying at yeah. home what you found helpful leave them down below for a comment for us yeah. and we'll see you soon okay thank you very much and goodbye and good luck bye for now <laughs> bye <laughs>